Something has happened. <gasps> oh, 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 okay, that's very cool. Okay. So welcome back to our review of the fairies versus witches mod. If you guys remember in the last episode, we investigated the fairies side of this mod with Nita, who is just hanging out over here. But we're not with Nita today because Nita, we decided to turn into a fairy. If you haven't checked out that video, I will drop it in the description below because it basically turns half of the spellcaster role into a fairy role. It is very complex. It's very interesting. There's a bunch of different ways you can get your power from. And I actually really like the mod and the changes that it made to uh, the game to if you were fancying an occult and particularly to fairies which we obviously don't have a developed cult for in the sims 4 but this episode we're going to be doing something different so i actually have nanami in this uh episode and we're going to be using nanami to check out the improved version of the witches side of the witches versus spellcasters mod uh, sorry the witches versus fairies mod because witches are no longer spellcasters with this mod let me explain a little bit more so as before i'm going to drop a link to patreon in case you guys want to check this mod out and last time we we did all things fairy this time we're going to be doing all things witches so most people assume witches are the spellcasters of sims 4 but that is wrong until now they've been hidden and forced to practice magic in secret but now they're ready to come out of the broom closet so witches are darker and grittier than the spellcasters of the magic realm dabbling in powers that are deemed too dangerous and too inhumane to be tolerated with the guidance of their spiritual ancestors these magic wielders can access rank and gain experience as they study, study witchcraft and battle each other or even fairies and spellcasters. There is much to be learned, including the his history of witchcraft and why they are so disliked by other magical beings. So already there is a bunch of more interesting lore and backstory to the witches. I'm very intrigued to learn more. And the first way that we're going to be able to learn more is by adding this witchcraft altar to our game. So let's go ahead and find that in buy mode. So here is the witchcraft altar. It is actually in coffee tables, believe it or not, but I'm going to pop it outside here and as with the fairy fountain that we added last time it feels oh my gosh it looks different at night time okay wait let's let's hold our horses just for now let's let those beautiful like symbols on the top there just die down for a minute i want to make it look you know suitably creepy or suitably like you know matching its source like we did with the fairy altar so let's make it look nice and spooky i think just you know for the aesthetic and let's also get some little candles around it as well like they had on the mod page just because i want to make things look suitably spooky so there we go now as i'm dragging stuff near the table i am getting the option to put things on top of it i don't know if i'm gonna do that yet though i want to see if the uh game offers me any like tips and hints and we'll kind of use that as a guide. And also, it feels a bit weird to be accessing my uh, witchcraft altar during the daytime. So I'm going to let some time go by. I'm actually going to dig this because I don't know if I have to make an offering like I do with the fairy fountain. We've got a ruby. Okay, perfect. And I am going to let the sun set in the background there just so that my altar starts to light up. And I also feel like, you know, if witches are meant to be hated, if their power is meant to be feared, it kind of makes sense that we do this under the cover of night okay so things are getting a little bit darker my runes haven't lit up just yet though you can still see the outline of them but for now they are in incognito mode and there we go they have lit okay so i'm gonna head over here and just inspect this altar now i can read through the mod page and figure out exactly what i'm supposed to be doing but i kind of want to oh okay well we're already a spellcaster so you know that's helpful in fact that just just reminds me you cannot be multiple occults using this mod so i am just gonna nip in here here and humanize the sim i'm gonna stop nanami being a spellcaster because let's face it compared to witches spellcasters are kind of basic and we want the next level so we now have no occult you also cannot reach that is that a little bit yeah okay let me uh let me move it forward for you just a little bit there we go and now we can go ahead and inspect the strange altar that just came with the house that we moved into nanami can tell that this massive hunk of rock appears to be made of an unusual matter it feels as though there's some sort of mild gravitational pull surrounding it maybe some sort of huge magnet or something okay well, like the fairy one, we know there's a strange power here. We've previously been a, a spellcaster, so we're going to use our, you know, slight understanding of the occult and of magicalness to just meditate on this altar and see if anything interesting happens when we uh, meditate on these strange glowing runes. I love this. I love that, like, it looks so cool that you would kind of use it as decoration, even if you kind of grew out of using the mod or you got bored of the mod or whatever. I do think there's a lot to explore, so I think it'll take a little while to get bored. But it's nice to know that it's so cool that you could kind of use it 
just as Deco. Is anything particularly interesting gonna happen though? I mean, last time we got sucked into the fairy realm, this time, nothing much seems to have happened. Although, who are you going to go and chat with? Is that just kind of random? Lilith. Okay, Lilith is here. But my meditation seems to have resulted in nothing. Hmm. I'm going to try and meditate once more, but I'm wondering if I should try and make an offering, of which I do actually have one because I dug up that ruby earlier on. So I could go ahead and use that. Hmm. Okay, still nothing is happening. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and just place this ruby on one of these edges here and seeing if now I've made an offering, it makes any difference. I could just read on the mod page, but I just wanted to see what happened if you kind of YOLO'd it. Or maybe I have to meditate after midnight. That could be a thing as well. Yeah, because nothing has happened pre-midnight. I'm just going to pop that back in my inventory for one second, but now it's 12. Let's see what happens after 12. Okay, still nothing to the mod page we go. <laughs> okay, an important staple in the aspiring Supreme Witch's Deco is the witchcraft altar. Humans may find it relaxing to meditate before it or may even summon a surprise visitor. Witches, on the other hand, are able to use it to gain experience and hone the skill, as well as cast special spells when altar configurations are in place. If certain objects are placed in just the right spot, magic will happen. Okay. Luckily, there is actually a guide for how to use this, and I can actually see a few things placed on this altar right now. Is it worth me trying to add these candles that we've got here? Because those candles are actually these ones right here. So those line up with those. I'm just gonna try. I, I like, I could just look and see how to do it. But I also just want to like see if anything comes on its own as well. It's kind of fun to try and figure stuff out rather than just always reading an exact guide. I'm also wondering if I need to pull the altar forward a bit in case something should be spawning, but it, it can't spawn because I'm too far forward. <gasps> oh, something has happened. Something has happened. Oh, <gasps> Okay, okay, that's pretty badass. A spiritual guide from the other side has been called to advise Nanami and provide insight into her options. Okay, what are my options then? My social is a little bit low, so chit-chatting with a ghost sounds like a whole vibe. And look, I can, through the extra dial here with witch, I can greet an ancestral witch, so that's what this sim is, or send back to the netherworld, so... I'm going to greet this ancestral witch, who I find super unattractive, by the way. Super, super unattractive. And I can also compliment her non-corporeal figure. Uh, you know, what with her being dead and all. Or I can ask about witchcraft. So I think I'm going to ask about witchcraft. She is called Hazel. And my sim thinks that this witch is but ugly. Absolutely but ugly. Which is interesting because I actually think she's a whole vibe. But uh, Nanami... Nami is non-impressed by her. I mean, she does only have a heart for Nita, really. Although, with Nita being a fairy, are they going to end up clashing? Who knows? Witchcraft is an art form requiring dedication and skill. Unlike the whimsical, frivolous spellcasters of the magical realm, or those sparkly pixies of the Sylvian Glade. Oof, a little bit of fairy shade there. Witches draw their power from the realm, uh, the spirit realm. We don't have the luxury of special place to call home or the ability to exercise our powers freely. So ancestral witches like myself guide the younger generations. If you're interested, I may be willing to share gifts with you. So we don't have a cool magical realm like the fairies do because we've got to kind of hide our craft so it is a very difficult like different situation but we're gonna ask her like look we're interested we don't care if you know we'll become hate for this sometimes if you want power you need to become hatred so we're gonna ask hazel dylan here our ancestral witch if we too can become a witch and see what she says you seem eager to learn the craft. However, I must know if you are worthy of these powers. If I knew you better, perhaps I'd be more willing to trust you. Or you can earn my trust by doing me a special favor. In the land of the Sylvian Glade, there are forest spirits called sprites. They possess great power, but are very elusive. If you manage to capture one and bring it to me, I give you my word, I will bestow witch powers upon you. Do we have a deal? So, Sylvian Glade, obviously, um, we managed to get to quite easily as a fairy through the fairy shrine that we placed last time. But this time, we're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way with the tree over here. And also, last time, we, like, talked with the spirit and asked it to grant us a wish. This time, we need to capture it and bring it back. So, it's already a very different situation. We are however inspired by the spectral influence. 
So I think she's probably pretty keen. Okay, we are ready to go ahead and explore the tree. So let's climb inside and see if we can get to the spectral realm. Although not the nice way that I'm about to rob you kind of way. So follow the sound. Follow uh, down the street. <gasps> Into the mist. Travel to the glade. Okay, so here we are. I wonder if fairies are going to spawn in. We're going to go hunt for sprites. This is where I found them last time. So I'm going to try the exact same thing again. We are very uncomfortable here though. Overthinking instantly, scanning the area, doesn't like it. So interestingly, this is actually a true slice of life, but it kind of matches, right? Because she's come to the spectral glade and she's immediately super uncomfortable. Doesn't like it, doesn't like our little fairies either. Oh, and they've also come over to investigate us, kind of thinking, hmm, you don't have wings. You're not interested in talking to us. You're just hunting for the sprites. I feel like you're not to be trusted. She's like, yeah, get away, fairy. Take your wings and buzz off. And okay, boom, there it is. The little creature is one of the sprites the ancestral witch spoke of. Finding it is easy enough now to capture it. Okay, I'm gonna distract it with a compliment because I know that they like that from um, our fairies. And then I'm gonna try and capture it. Is this gonna work? Is it easy to capture a sprite? <gasps> Oops, the sprite was able to get away. Maybe an army will have better luck next time. Okay, catching sprites. Not as easy as complimenting sprites by the looks of it. Oh man, she looks so miserable about being here. She's like, Ugh, I'm even allergic to all the fluff flying through the air. What is this place? I hate it here. Get away from me, tiny fairy. Now, of course, you can befriend the witch, I guess, as well. And skip this part if you don't want to hunt for a sprite. But I kind of want to see what it looks like when you catch a sprite. And I'm noticing that ever since I tried to catch that sprite, they are not as easy to find. Okay, I'm going to compliment it a bunch and gossip to it. And then I'm gonna try to capture it. Okay, did that work? Do I have a sprite? Or did it escape? I kind of feel like it escaped. Oh, wait, do I have it? Did I catch the sprite? It didn't tell me that I caught it, but I'm assuming I did, because I can't hunt for them anymore. So, unless it's floated off somewhere else, I'm assuming I've managed to catch it. So, I'm gonna go and head my butt home and see if I can offer it to the witch. Now, it is daytime. Can I summon her during the day? I'm not sure. I will try and meditate again. If not, I do know her, so I... Oh, I can't invite her around. Okay, hopefully she still wants to hang out in the day. Okay, boom, she's back. She can be summoned in the daytime, so that's always useful to know. And, oh wait, do I not have my sprite? <laughs> Where did my sprite go? No, okay. Well, catching sprites doesn't seem to have worked for us, so I stay in instead will try and make friends with her. Although I kind of want to know if she like absorbs the sprite or like kills it, because that would be kind of badass. So I'm tempted to go back and try it one last time. Okay, another sprite. Can I actually catch it? Success! Now we managed to snatch the little sprite and stash it in her inventory. Ah, oh, so it will appear in your inventory. Always good to know. Now it's time to deliver it to the Ancestral Witch. Okay, so it must have disappeared off somebody where else and I couldn't have found it last time, but it's fine. Now we've managed to get one. Let's see what she's gonna do with it. I feel like she might eat it. And luckily, Witchy is still hanging out in my living room. <laughs> Just witch things. Let's go ahead and trade our sprite. Oh, she just disappeared as I said that. Great. Okay, let's let's get it to come back again. I have your sprite, babes. Okay, so now that we've got her back again, I am gonna go ahead and trade our sprite for witch powers this time. Don't disappear on me, okay? Look, I built you a beautiful little altar vibes around here. I've given you the sprite. You're what? Yes, okay. Oh, oh, oh! Okay, that's very cool. Okay. Oh, I am looking magical and a little bit woozy right now. Nice. And I've already reached witchcraft level two. Okay, so a lot happened. This little creature will give me more than enough power to transform you. Brace yourself for a rush of magic. So it's not a witch. We actually seem to consume the sprite for power. So it's already a darker origin story, which I'm totally here for. And we have attained a higher understanding of the art of magic. Check out her guide to learn new spells and keep working to improve witchcraft, the witchcraft skill. And we are now a practitioner level witch. It's a long journey ahead with more powers to be gained before we reach our full potential. In the meantime, Nanami should practice witchcraft, win a power spa session and magical battles and learn more spells and abilities in order to progress her witch rank. So I'm assuming this now will act as like a witch tree. Okay, so I can meditate at the altar and it should now help me with my witch skills now when i was a fairy i got a specific book 
Will that be something that will happen here or not? I'm not sure. But I now have this witchcraft skill. And I also have a witch rank. So it works the same as the fairies did in which they add the fairy powers and fairy ranks. And your rank will allow you to do things. Like it will unlock new things for you. But you need to have enough witchcraft as well in order to be able to do them. So this helps us all up. But this is our nitty gritty individual stuff that we need to be able to do. And if I click on Anami, I now have this magical kind of tree here as well. So I can use subtle magic, I guess, which is same as fairies where you don't see all of the extra stuff. And I can start to choose my power source. Now, this is very similar to the fairies. In fact, I feel like it's all the same power sources. And it's starting to get towards nighttime, which means my runes are going to start glowing very soon while I practice my witchcraft at this altar. And also, I guess we're going to start seeing the moon appear in the sky. So that means I should be able to use the moon as a power source and kind of lock into one power source in the same way that we did last time. So I feel like moon and witches literally is name a more iconic combo. I don't feel like there is one. So I'm going to try and use the moon as my power source. And with the fairies, this kind of locked in. So I was kind of saying it would be cool to design fairies based on what power source she went for. So with Nisa, the first power source I used was nature, which felt like it fit fairies very well. It actually also feels like it fits witches very well. But then there was air, there was music, there was electricity, lightning, there was rain, there was fire. There was sun. There was basically a bunch of ways you could use it. But let's go ahead and lock ourselves into moon. And moon also means that we can unlock certain witchcraft spells earlier if they are on the same moon tree. Any of the other kind of skill trees as well. Uh, sorry, specific power sources will help you unlock different spells earlier if you've decided to align to that power source. So I'm drawing my power. Oh, I'm drawing my power from the moon, which means I have completely filled up my witch experience here as well. So witches possess inherent abilities depending on the source of power, but developing their magical prowess also allows them to reach even higher levels of ability. As witches practice, they're able to learn more spells and gain experience that will allow them to advance their powers. So I'm now aligned to the moon and I'm going to start idling by doing these cool little magical like idols, which just look really, really cool. And this is the way that moon powers look. So it's kind of like a ethereal moony glow. It looks very cool. And I'm going to get her just to start practicing her witchcraft to uh, try and increase her power. So in the same way that it changed the little kind of lock around the plumb bob for the fairies, this is how the witch's one looks. Oh, oh my gosh, that's so freaking cool. Okay, it's like marble with like the moon's symbol and it kind of, um, it matches this as well. And I'm feeling energized by the lunar boost of the moon because I have an intimate connection to the moon. She feels it's like wash over her and instantly feels a boost of energy. And this celestial ob object, which is the moon, has existed for a millennia and possesses a great deal of power. With unbreakable focus, Nanami will be able to channel it beautifully as the moon as her magic source. I wonder if I'm more powerful at nighttime, that would kind of be very fitting and very cool, wouldn't it? So you can still use this to also summon a familiar. So I previously had a familiar from being a, I think from being a spellcaster. So I can still have it floating around me, which is cute. And I'm going to keep just meditating and practicing in order to increase this skill right here, my witchcraft skill. I can also ask where to find the guide to witchcraft from our ancestral witch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. See if she can help us out. Ah, yes, the book. Indeed, it is quite an asset to a young witch. I happen to know the presence of two amethyst crystals on either side of the altar will allow a copy of the book to be conjured. Oh, okay, this is so freaking cool. So you can conjure different things on this altar based on knowing what to put on either side. So I need two amethyst crystals, which I think I can probably order from a PC. So let's go ahead and order some amethyst crystals. I mean, I honestly feel like you should actually go out in the wild and search for them. Like that would be probably the more canon way to do it. And also I kind of like that it could be a cool rite of passage as like a young witch and um, being able to find two amethysts in the wild, which means that she can now summon for the first time. Like you could do that with like young children and stuff. So I really like how you could develop that. I'm also using this table here is called the Ingeli TSM. This, the, what is the TSM bell? Let me remind myself. Um, it's from a certain place, but if you search this bard's archive, you'll be able to add this desk and it functions as a PC. 
but obviously it just looks like a million times cooler. So I tend to use it for my like occult sims. So let's see if we can purchase some amethyst crystals. We can't. Let's go ahead and purchase ourselves two of those. And then let's head out here. I am going to go ahead and move these cool candles that we had from before. We'll just place them on the ground over here. Yeah. And um, let's move this ruby because we're not going to need that now either. And instead, let's go ahead and place an amethyst on either side of this table. And okay, we can now conjure a guide to witchcraft. It is rainy, which is not ideal, but I am very intrigued to see how this looks. Okay, so the amethysts are in place. Oh! <gasps> And the book has been, oh, it's so freaking cool. The amethyst in place and the book has been conjured. Conjured? Conjured. And Anami has discovered the art of altar configuration. Certain spells can be cast using the altar if certain reagents are in place just in the right spot. Try combining different crystals, flowers, and harvestables and any other mystical artifacts to unlock new spells and rituals. Be careful though, some combinations are unpredictable and can leave the caster with devastating side effects. So it actually makes sense because as a witch, it always, as a spellcaster, it always felt like, you know, having all of these crystals around was like, it fit the aesthetic, but it didn't actually have any functional reason to do it. But now we do. Okay, so I know that adding a ruby and an amethyst, it doesn't result in anything. But there's probably a bunch of different combos and I'm really excited to figure out what they all are. And I wonder if we can discover any of them by reading our witchcraft book, this guide to witchcraft. She's actually reading this autonomously, so she's clearly pretty intrigued by what is in there. And I can use this to study witchcraft, which is what she's doing right now. Also, I can use it to open the guide to witchcraft and kind of see my whole progression tree as well. So let's go ahead and do that too. So this is Nanami's guide to witchcraft, which is of many elements of their craft to keep track of, from the status of their rank, their collections of power, the various configurations of their magical altar, which is can refer to this handy guide for any aspect of their journey into the magic mastery. So this obviously replaces a spellcaster book that you see as well. So there's five witches ranks. There are 10 powers we can learn. There are 26 witchcraft progressions we can make and the altar we know one of four. So we're currently a practitioner, but we can become a charmer, a spellbinder, a master caster and a supreme witch. I'm loving this background as well. And the powers. So recent power source, level-headed, studious, magical mentor, teleportation, source master, portal pass, potion prodigy, ancestral connection, and necromancer. Now, what we discovered with fairies is a bunch of these are the same as spellcasters, but there were also, with the spells, some new additions as well. Like Ivy Wrap was new. All of these other ones, though, are actually the same as the fairies. So fairies and witches do, for the most part, it looks like have the same spell inventory spell bunk to go ahead and go back to. Is there a few here that are different? Maybe there is. I'd need to see them side by side, but they are still mortal enemies, which is interesting. And a witch's also has many uses and provides a wide array of rituals that can be formed with the correct reagents. So we already know this one. Your reagent is an amethyst and amethyst to get the guides to witchcraft. But we will also be able to conjure snow, summon the ancestral witch, and also summon a familiar as well. So very intrigued to know what those are. And I wonder if I can get them by studying witchcraft. And also I would like to learn some spells. So why don't we go ahead and try and learn. Keratin conversion will spice up our hair. Liberate. Claim the belongings of others as your own. Is there any here that feel new? Mystify, discombobulate the mind of another. Surge, somnium, and tone deafen. Make someone tone deaf. Okay, since we're a witch and it's kind of hinted that we're a little bit darker, a little bit twistier, I'm going to go ahead and learn a bit more of a cheekier spell. So I'm going to try and learn Mystify so I can cause Sims to become dazed, which is probably going to be pretty useful right now because I've got a witch desperately trying to break all my stuff and use my PC. So, you know. And also some extra stuff I can do. I can ask about power sources, ask about witch ramps, ra uh, witch ranks. Initiate a magical battle. I can power spar with her. I can also do a magic convergence, which means as we were discovered with fairies, I'll be able to find out what her power source is, which I kind of feel like is darkness. And I can also ask her for magical training too. Oh, and I've learned the mystify spell. Okay, amazing. I will practice it on Hazel, but for now, I would like to do a magical convergence with her because I've all drained of witch experience for now. And I think this might help me get some buck. And yeah, okay, so hers definitely looks a little bit different to mine. And that also helped me uh, reach witchcraft level three. So I should get access to some new spells using that. And look, okay, deep and dark. Nanami has converged her magic with another element. 
and feels an overwhelming dark aura around her. Until the convergence ends, Nanami will benefit from the benefits of the dark power source, as well as some other, where is it? Potential effects. I wonder what those could be. However, she keeps wrecking my stuff, so I do kind of want to do a spell on her. But first of all, I want to use her for some magical training. Again, this is very similar to spellcasters. So nothing particularly new here. You can obviously also do it as vampires in The Sims. <gasps> oh, and look at her dark power. Okay, the dark power looks really cool. And I don't know, is the magical battle or the power spa? I feel like this is like a heavy battle. Like we're going to fight to the death. Whereas power spa feels a little bit like, oh, let's just try out our powers. I'm going to try this one with her too. Ooh. So there is also a thunderstorm going on right now. So I'm going to use a cheat menu here to actually go ahead and remove my power sauce. Oh, okay. That made me jump because I want to see if I can use, oh, I thought I might be able to get a lightning power source. Because, you know, we're literally in a thunderstorm right now. But I'm not actually getting the option. So the only power source I can currently get is air. Which isn't, to me, as cool as moon. I do like, though, the fact that with a magical convergence, if you did have, like, little witchlings that didn't know what their, um, you know, what felt right for them, which element they should draw their power source from, then they could keep trying the convergence and keep, you know, experiencing other people's power. And that might be able to help them with um, figuring out which one's right for them. Okay, and she is obviously much stronger than me right now, which, you know, is un understandable. But we're still going to try and get our own back on it by casting our first magical spell, which is the mystify spell we learned earlier on. So fingers crossed this is going to work. We are still doing a little bit of a glow, which is either from being focused or it's from our deep and darkness. I feel like it could be deep and darkness. And we've achieved witchcraft level four by casting that spell. Do they look a bit confused? Oh, they do. Look, they've got like a little confusion around their head and we have managed to mystify them. Nice. So I do get a few like extra conversation topics, I guess. I can compliment magical prowess. I can uh, discuss the magic realm politics exchange magical tips as well and also imply that mother is a hug as a mean option and if i look on the debug menu there is the option to forgive a witch feud which makes me think that you can have like whole feuds with other witches so i guess if you hate them then they will become like a witch feud rather than just an enemy i can also learn ancestral witch configuration which learned how to configure her altar in order to summon an ancestral witch okay so that is definitely loki a little bit cheaty because that's going to tell us that configuration that we were wondering about earlier on but i'm kind of interested to know what it is so that configuration is Shino lights. Okay, so we use Shino light for that. How about snow and familiar? Can I kind of, you know, speed things on a little bit and figure out how to do those as well? Okay, so look away if you'd rather figure this out yourself. But okay, that one kind of makes sense. And ah, I see, I see, I see. Okay, I won't say them out loud in case you guys don't want spoilers. But there's a logic to them, which I like. It's not just random. Okay, so I've put the uh, reagent on there. And I'm trying to work out which is the right... Okay. So if you put it in the wrong position, it won't work. You do actually have to put the reagent in the correct position on the altar in order for the spell to work. I wonder if there's going to be any more of these. Oh, go easy. I wonder if there's going to be any more of these that come because I know this mod pack is still being developed. So there could be more of these configurations that you can do. And oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. It actually worked as well. In the middle of summer, we've summoned the snow. I wonder if I let it set, whether I'll be able to use that as my new power source. I've literally summoned my own power source. That's that's pretty badass. Okay, so while I wait for the snow to set, if I do want to learn new spells, I need to get myself enough witch XP. So that's the way that it works. You increase your spell rank, which is this one by doing witchcraft. But to do witchcraft, you've got to have witch XP, which you gain by practicing. So basically study or meditate or get mentored to gain this witch XP right here and then use it to learn cool new things. So I think, you know, since I've just summoned the snow, I should probably try out frost a, a fix. So I will learn that as my next spell. Another interesting thing that I found is 
you can meditate together. So if you had like, I don't know, a mother and daughter witch, or if you just had a little coven, you could all build up your XP together, which I don't know. I thought that was kind of cute. My snow, unfortunately, is not setting, so I won't be able to use it as power source. I guess it is summer and there are limitations to magic. Oh, <gasps> no, I lie. It's there. It's there. It's there. Quick. I'm going to use the, st the ice as my new power source. Oh, look at my little icy hands. Look how much it just matches my general aesthetic. I am kind of low-key an ice queen, so I will take that. Look at the little ice shards. I'm now cold-hearted. Closely related to the water power source, this cold state of matter offers an extra layer of strength that is great and will suffice for destruction. Hopefully the cold never bothered Nanami as ice is now her new source of magic. So that's pretty handy. And I would like to try out this new ice spell that I've learned as well, so... Let's try cry- no, go nowhere. Let's go ahead and try cryocast on this unsuspecting townie here. Chloe Grubber. Chloe, it's looking real cold. And we're gonna see- I don't know where my hand has gone genuinely. We're gonna see if we can freeze her. Now, you went all the way over here to do it, which means I don't actually know where- Oh, there she is. Okay, here she is. Now, this is definitely a spellcaster spell because I did use it in my witch's story. But we've gone ahead and frozen poor Chloe here. I guess now that we've got the power of ice, this is just kind of easy to us. This is pretty pedestrian. And with trying out our new magic, we are now a charmer. Not new, yet not nearly as advanced. Charmer witches are ripe for testing their magical boundaries. Nanami should practice witchcraft, win power spell sessions and magical battles, and learn more spells to progress her witch rank. Now, I am speedrunning this with the help of cheats and stuff because I just want to learn everything in the mod. But I would actually say it takes, like, I've, I've cheated my witchcraft up to nine. But I'd say if you're going to play it, like, normally without doing all that, it actually takes quite a while to level this stuff up, which is great if you don't just want to get bored of this mod and blast through it all in the space of one place sitting. If you'd rather slowly develop your powers over time and across, like, a generation then you could definitely do that as well. I just want to show you everything that's in the mod, which is why I'm zooming through. And I'm also, I'm going to just bump you up all the way to level five, which is Supreme Witch, which we get some nice music for, but I'm traveling because this is nice music. I am actually going to head over to Nita because I want to see what a witch fairy fight looks like so let's go ahead and knock on the door now in my original series these guys are actually in love i'm pretty sure they may even be married but in this less so because they're actually mortal enemies one of them is a fairy one of them is a witch i'm kind of interested to see if oh you can see her wings look at this i don't know if she's trying to hide it <laughs> although this is very cute even though they're mortal enemies instantly she's got a massive crush on nita which is so freaking cute i didn't even have this mod when i was playing my original playthrough so i had no idea that um they would be into each other but the fact that they are is actually super cute so i can't see her fairy wings right now although i know that they're there and i kind of want to know what additional options do you guys have in conversation being that you are from opposite you know opposite ends of the magical spectrum so we can still compliment magic prowess. Enthused about the cold, which I guess makes sense since our power source is ice. But it seems like there's no specific like anti-witch stuff that I can see unless it's all in mean. Sorry, anti, um, okay. Anti-fairy stuff that is. We can imply mother is a horsefly, which I guess is the mean interactions that we get against fairies. But other than that, it's it's kind of chill. I guess you'd have to add the lore of them hating each other yourself because they don't seem to naturally hate each other. In fact, she's got the biggest witch crush on this fairy I've ever seen. And okay, on this area here, which is the magic wheel, I can ask about her fairy form. Look at the fairy like glitter that's just there all the time. So we're gonna ask her about her fairy form. Can I change her into a full fairy form? Okay, there we go. She's full fairy right now. She's also lost a hand. Neither of them have hands for this. I'm not really quite sure why. Oh my gosh, I'm... You're immediately asking her, could you see us being together forever? This crush is so freaking cute. You're kind of coming on strong to her right now. And also she's been taught that you guys will always hate each other. So not sure if it's ideal. It's very cute though. And I'm going to try a magical battle between my first ever witch and my first ever fairy. Even though it genuinely seems like they would much rather be, uh, I don't know, not fighting, more kissing. 
you're meant to be on flirty as well. You're so into her. It's actually so freaking cute because I love this couple in my main series. And I feel like if any two uh, witches and fairies could overcome their natural hatred, um, it would be these two. So... I feel like these guys would actually... Look at the snow falling as well from my spell. Um, I feel like these two would go against all odds, despite the fact that they are meant to be from opposite sides. They're meant to be from rivals. I kind of think that they would somehow work it out and fall in love no matter what. But what is stronger? Fairies or witches? Let's go ahead and find out. So, I guess... Okay. Nita's power source is music, whereas Nanami's is ice. So you can see on their hands. You see the musical notes next to Nita's. We did that last episode, so you can check that out. Whereas Nanami has this new ice crystals from before. And oh no, why are you feeling sad? She was feeling really sad for a moment there. I think because she doesn't want to fight her. She'd much rather be kissing her. But I'm making you fight because I want to see this mod, okay? So you've got to fight. Fight it out instead with the little fairy altar in the background. It'd be really cool if the fairies like floated while they were fighting. But, oh, oh, good shot, good shot. I guess it would be like a whole new, um... oh, fairies are stronger, fairies are stronger. Well, they're not this fairy stronger. It would be a whole new animation, which unfortunately we just don't have. But, okay, Nanami lost that fight. Nita, Nita and her musical power source seem to be the stronger option here. And I do just want to try out new things. What would happen if I made them really hate each other? You know, as a fairy and a witch. Okay, I don't seem to get any extra stuff. It's still just power source and power spars and magical battles. But I guess you could add... I think there's some mods for like deadly spars and battles. So I guess you could go ahead and add those as well. But also these guys are never meant to be enemies, okay? They're meant to be... Uh, <laughs> they're meant to defy all odds and instead be lovers. So I have to give them a first kiss. I can't let Namnita not be a couple. They've got to be a couple. But we've experienced everything on the fairy side. We've experienced everything on the witch side. And we've seen how the two sides differ. So rather than using the altar as a fairy, you instead use the statue instead. Witches don't have a Sylvian glade, but they can instead summon an ancestral ancestor to help teach them about magic. And the two of them, you know, are meant to kind of low-key... I'm going to actually go ahead and add add to family so that I can see what Nita's insult for Nanami would be. Okay, it's the imply mother is a hug thing. That makes sense. So they're not exclusive to witches and to fairies. Anyone could say that, but if you were saying it's a witch, it would be the hug. And if you're saying it's the fairy, it would be the horsefly thing. And unlike with fairies that have all of this cool extra stuff you can do, such as the fairy form and being able to fly around the room, witches don't have that. Which is obviously a little bit of a shame, but I guess you get the familiar and stuff instead. Plus you get a fairy girlfriend, which is pretty cool. Now, the future of the mod is there are plans to add more and more spells and abilities. Add to and improve the current spells and abilities as well. There should be more mod crossplay compatibly. Compatibility with this and the other mods that this creator makes. The creator, of course, being Spinning Plum Bobs. And as before, I will drop a link to this mod in the description below. And there also, which this is the thing that makes me the most excited, there are plans to expand on the lore and the backstory and extra features such as Witch Coven's gold magical battles, careers, aspirations, and more, which I think is going to be the really exciting part of this because I think the base that we have here is super exciting. I think there's a lot of potential and I like that we have have two conflicting sides but right now it doesn't seem like it makes too much difference whether they are enemies or whether they are friends so i would like for more of that i think already you can do some really interesting gameplay with choosing your power source and changing your aesthetics to fit that and it's so much fun creating a fairy with the wings and everything and being able to go to sylvian glade too but i think you know we've got the foundations of some great lore here i would really like to see these two sides feel more different to each other i want to understand why they hate each other so much unless i I'm just missing things in the mod in which case if i am let me know in the comments below but i feel like that is the direction that this mod should take because law and that kind of interesting stuff is one thing that you know the sim sometimes feels like it lacks and spellcasters in particular kind of feel like they lack so if we can try and build on that with these guys then that would be really really fun i want it to be really difficult for them to be in a relationship because of how different they are i honestly kind of want the witches to feel really dark and maybe they have to get 
their magical energy from doing evil things or from doing things like, you know, killing the sprites and stuff. I think that would be fun. Like, it doesn't mean that real life, like, insulting real life witches or anything like that. It's more just it would be fun to kind of go down a bit of a very different route from the fairy side. For me as well, I think it would have been quite fun to have certain spells locked for witches and certain spells locked for fairies so that they could only do certain things and maybe certain power sources were locked as well so maybe fairies could get it from the sun and he and nature whereas witches could get it from ice and darkness and the moon and have them be a little bit more distinct I think that would have been a more fun way to take it. That was just my two cents personally. But like I said, this mod has a lot more development. I'm interested to know what you guys think of it so far. So let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of the witches side to this as well. And if there's any other mods you guys want me to check out, please let me know. I love doing mod reviews and checking them out for you guys. And it also saves you guys downloading until you know if it's right for you. So uh, yeah, let me know and I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.